All right. Hi, everyone. Leslie Thornton, Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss. Today, I'm joined by Felicia Sloyne. Am I saying that correct? Yes. Perfect. Well, Felicia is a Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss graduate and the most recently has joined the Warrior Goddess Mastermind to keep her transformation going. And she was lovely enough to join us and uh, to do this interview today. And Felicia, I'm so excited to have you in particular because just, I've told you this before, but your way of showing up in the program has been uh, just, I, how do I even describe it? Like, how do I say it in words? It's like, just the way that you show up with love and service and you share yourself and you like take other people under your wing, but you also take care of yourself. You ask for what you need. Like, I'm pretty sure that like under your wing, like the whole community was able to thrive just because of your just diving in and being authentic and real and asking questions and just doing the whole thing. So just want to highlight that again for like the fact that just your way of being is such a beautiful example of leadership and like what, how this work actually works. So yeah, it's just your automatic it means so way. So much being. to me. Yeah. Especially means, coming from you. It means so much to everybody that gets to be in your presence. Just last night on one of our mastermind <laughs> calls, <laughs> Kendall, she flipped around her camera and Felicia's name is there with two other people's names as far as like somebody who she wants to remember because of probably the way that you made her feel. Just held and cared about and heard and listened to and understood and empathized with and just everything. So thank you for being here. And I'm really looking forward to having you get to share a little bit more about your path and, and how you got to be the amazing, amazing Felicia today, because <laughs> as I remember, you have a lot of experience in the healing arts world. Is that correct? Tell us about your experience. Well, I've always been drawn to um, different modes of healing. Um, we, we also share a connection to having spent time in the Bay Area, and that's one of the mm -hmm. things that we really bonded on, or bonded around when we first talked. And when I lived in the Bay Area, I don't even remember how many years ago, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I did a, a chapter of my life there and was really introduced to a lot of different interesting healing modalities. At that time, I was really trying to stay off of medication mm. for uh, depression and anxiety. So I was trying all sorts of things and I was very open to acupuncture and craniosacral work and astrology. And I mean, just like, I just loved it. And um so it, more recently, I during the pandemic, I had the presence of mind to sign up for a program called Breathe for Change, which is specifically for educators. I'm a music teacher, and um, that program helped me become a wellness and social emotional learning and yoga facilitator. Mm -hmm. um, mostly I signed up for it just to keep myself accountable. For, to do yoga and self-care, but I got so much more out of the program than just a certification. I, re I think it really set the groundwork for me to start doing this work. So mm -hmm. it's healing modalities of various sorts are have always been of interest to me. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of people can relate. First of all, I mean, we've had a bunch of yoga teachers or you know, different instructors and different healing arts modalities kind of come through the program. And I think the fact that you guys are already leaders in the healing arts space, right. And even being a music teacher and an educator, like that's part of it as well. Um, just really, again, shows like the fact that you're doing this work, not only for yourself, but you're also doing it to create better space, you know, for everyone that's around you. Absolutely. And, yeah. It's a feedback loop. Mm. It's Absolutely. a feedback loop. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it points exactly to how we started the conversation out, you know, about like who you are, you know, is that feedback loop, right? Or you are the generator of just everybody having it work for each other. And it's just really beautiful to watch. Mm -hmm. So what I really hear about your story is like to avoid that anxiety and depression for yourself. So tell us more about that. Um, well, uh, I, come from a family of people who have struggled with various forms of mental illness. 
Um, and I myself have struggled, obviously, with uh, depression and mental illness. And um, I think that for most of my life, I, well, at least since I can really remember as a child, food has always been something that calmed me and it was always accessible it's legal you know i always say that about ice cream is like that's always been like the way that i would self-soothe and um unfortunately i didn't grow up with a lot of examples or models for how to take care of myself so i'm having to learn to do that as an adult and i don't wish that on anybody i really don't but um i'm so grateful that there are many modes of healing that are available i mean i do i do uh use western medicine but i also think that the um this part of my journey the weight loss hypnosis has really opened me up to a new way of parenting myself mm. I don't even know if that answered the question. No, absolutely. What, Everything. No, 100 percent. Yeah. And a lot of people that I speak with, you know, that come through this podcast, they have those really tumultuous and challenging backgrounds, upbringings, you know, parents and just all of that kind of stuff and having that mental illness. And then, you know, we make these decisions as kids or as teenagers or whatever, like, I will never be like that. Yes, I. that was my biggest, that was the biggest impetus for me to not go on medication because I saw that it didn't work for, you know, for my mother, for my sister, um, that not that it didn't work, but just that it was such a, like a black hole. Like you just never, if, you know, if you went off of it or it would work for a time, but then it wouldn't. Um, and I just, that for me, that wasn't the way to go. Um, and I spent a lot of money and a lot of time and energy like exploring other things. And now I'm, I, I'm happy that I did, even though I did end up on medication, but that it was an uh, empowered, as you would say, an empowered choice to go on medication, but then also continue to do, to practice other forms of healing. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. I think that there's definitely a balance between the medication and using that, but then, you know, as far as I can tell, I think most practitioners, when they, um, when they prescribe a mental health kind of medication or whatever that is, they do recommend some sort of therapy at the same time. And I remember having a roommate, uh, that, you know, she had the anxiety medications and she's like, but I don't really want to do the therapy part. Right. And, you know, that's one choice and some people choose that. And then there's some of us though, that are like, no, I don't want to be on this medication. Like, I don't want to be tied down, you know, for myself, I could call it like apocalyptic thinking of like, if the world fell apart and I couldn't get this medication, I want to know that I'm still going to be able to survive. Yeah. Like, I don't want to feel that attached to anything like that, you know, that's holding me back from just being able to be right. So you know, for me, it, to, your story points to your unstoppability as a human to go after what you want. I'm, I'm stubborn. That's, that is something, <laughs> that's something I am. I'm definitely stubborn. I and I, that. and I did do therapy. I mean, I've been in therapy forever. It, it feels like, and, mm -hmm. and my decision to pursue this path, the hypnosis path, um, has been, you know, at first I kind of was like, well, I've done so much therapy and like, what am I really going to learn that I don't already know? Mm -hmm. And the truth is, there are some things that I already knew. I mean, there's many things that I've already knew because I've talked about it for years in therapy. But this has been a completely different experience for me. I don't even know how to say why. Um maybe it's because the responsibility is on me to show up every day versus like for an hour a week and just like kind of get it all out and then be like Whew, okay that's done now what you know mm -hmm. um and it was also the reason why i decided to stay on in the mastermind program because i need that consistency reparenting oneself is not a quick fix mm. that is what i have learned mm. and 
I need the, con the continual support and the continual reflection back to me of, you know, where I'm, where I've been and where I'm going. And therapy has helped me tremendously in my life, but this is different. Mm. I don't consider this the same thing. Got it. Yeah. I really appreciate you sharing that. Cause I also get people all the time saying, you know, I I'm in therapy right now and it's like totally support that. And, you know, I've had so many people, there was one woman in particular, probably told this story before, and she had been in therapy for years and years, kind of dealing with her relationship with her mom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she had been in this program for four or five weeks and she, you know, in front of her therapist started using one of the tools in this program. And our therapist was like, whoa, whoa what was that? And she was like, you just like got yourself out of that place that we've been working on for two years in like yeah. 10 minutes. Like my therapist like, has also said similar things like, wow, you're doing parts work. That's amazing. Like, I'm like, yeah, why haven't I, why haven't I done parts work before? Like, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So, yeah. 100%. Yeah. So I think it helps those people that are like, well, can I just get this in therapy? It's like, not in this way. And I love the way that you kind of found that for yourself of, and you and I had talked about this around like, you know, self-care being like, I go for massages or I go for pedicures or I go for acupuncture, or I go for this. And it's like, I see that all the time with the tiny little like dabbles of little things. Right. And it's like, we feel good during that time, but then we're back in our own heads and our own minds, you know, creating whatever we create so that we then have to go back again. Oh, I've, right. I've had massage sessions and then gotten in my car and gotten into a car accident after, you know, it's like, you, you know, it's like, and that's another thing, like doing yoga is sort of like doing massage and chiropractic for yourself. Like you don't have to pay hundreds of dollars. You can actually put yourself in alignment and you can actually like, you know, there, there are ways of, of healing oneself that, um, I don't know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Track, no, but... it's really great. And I'm excited to be able to even dive in deeper because I know that you've done some that. Yeah, we're going to get into it. Yeah. But that that change and that shift into like, you're responsible for, you know, helping me feel better during this hour and a half session yes. versus I am responsible. Right. Yep. And Hannah and I, um, who are both coaching in the program now, like that is something that we both have identified that is in common is that both of us, once we got past our obsession and mental obsession with food and all of our mental and emotional swirl about that and all this kind of stuff, then we got present to what else we can do. And the fact that we can be in service in these bigger, more powerful ways. And a big part of leadership yes. is learning how to take full responsibility. Every outcome that I get, every outcome that I don't get, right. Is something that's, you know, there to be discovered with me. So there is a change in energy when we're like, Oh, what am I missing? Coach, you know, it's the same thing as like playing a basketball game, you know, and there's the coach on the sideline and there you all are as the clients in the program and you're all playing the way you would normally play the game, right? You're all playing the game of life out there and eating the way that you would eat. And then you come back and it's like, you know, whether it's on the camera and like you guys giving me a snapshot of what happens to me during your game, right? In your life or, you know, yeah, me seeing it live or you giving me the snapshot. It's like, okay, here's what you can add in, right? Here's what I notice in that so that you can make your game better, Yeah. right? And just having that reflection from the sidelines to be like, okay, coach, I got it, right? And then being invested in yourself versus if you're always showing up to that game of like, with the belief of, I will always fail at this game, <laughs> right? It's like, how can we ever show up? How can we ever succeed? I think one of the things that made me know, I mean, there were many things that made me know that I wanted to work with you specifically. One of them was as actually this podcast, which I can't, I'm like, I'm sort of like, wow, you know, I listened to this podcast back in October, September, I don't remember. And like decided, I was like, who, I don't know who this woman is. I don't know what she's doing. I don't know, you know, I don't know anything except that I'm going to work with her. Mm -hmm. And I really, I didn't even know that that would entail that I would be on calls every, you know, three nights a week and all of that. But um, one of the big, like, takeaways that I got from the podcast was if you're not playing your game, if you're, if you are, like, even if you're, like, sitting on the sidelines, at least for me, that's what causes me to eat. Mm. Like not living in my truth, not living to my full, uh, living up to my full potential, not exploring new ways of 
being and thinking and interacting with myself and others and people who aren't like me, you know, people who are, you know, I love that this program has expanded my, my world, especially during the pandemic when I wasn't really leaving my house much, but to meet other people who are so interesting to me, um, has, I think that that's a big part of, for me, the stopping the obsession with food mm. and like, and weight and all of that. So and awesome. That. What you're saying. Yeah. I'm sitting on the sidelines, that procrastination, that not taking action, like yeah. getting in the game. It absolutely does cause us to eat. Cause there's a part of us that's hungry to play the game. And it's like, sometimes right. we just need that little push, right? That's why we show up every single twice a week. Now on the podcast, we're going twice a week, right? It's a, just like, <laughs> How many times, you know, until it's like, yeah. you know, and, and trusting yourself that your soul is asking for you to like, take that step. Like, let's play the game, you know, so yes. that you don't have to keep overeating on those sidelines. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. I would be the one on the sideline with like, you know, buttered popcorn or, you know, like <laughs> mm -hmm. 100% being jealous of everybody who's playing the game being like, Meh. like, mm -hmm. I don't feel that way now. I feel like I'm moving toward something better, bigger and better. That's fantastic. Yeah. I remember before I started doing this work, like really, like I always just felt like that I was meant for something a lot more in this life. And I remember on your first phone call with me of, of that kind of being the case of like, I just know that I meant for greatness. I know that I meant for so much more, you know, and there's so many messages that I at least got, but I think that our whole society gets of like, Oh, silly dreamer. Like, Yep. Like that's nice. Like keep dreaming, you know, and kind of hearing, you know, parental voices in the background, like, yes. And you have to be a realistic, like you need to have your nine to five or you need to write like just all those different constraints. But, you know, for anyone listening, it's like that, you know, what if that voice is really real? And what if that not listening to that and taking action on that is the reason why food is such an issue for you? Mm -hmm. Right. I've talked so much in the past about how people who are you know, really addicted to, you know, crack, cocaine, you know, heroin, alcohol. Like I think they're the most brilliant human beings on the planet. They just probably had really, you know, challenging upbringings and parenting, and they just didn't get introduced to the resources that could really support them in using their brains. Like these super smart, your brain can move so fast. And it's just so, you know, like you're so smart. All my clients are, but it can also bring us into these really, dark places that yeah, just where you have yeah. to numb out 100 percent. you really have to numb out absolutely yeah. and if you were to because i know we talked about reparenting and i guess that's the first thing that i think about but and we know how much our past and our upbringing affects the way that we show up in our day-to-day -day lives today it's everything so you know if you were to know like what created those dark places for people like is it just the parenting part like what are you learning as you're oh I don't I mean I think everybody's different I don't mm. you know I'm not somebody who I I mean I had my sister was very mentally ill and mm -hmm. like it's sort of hard to know like did that was she born mentally ill or was, right. was that something Absolutely. that I mean and our, definitely like our family dynamics played into her illness but it's just hard to know. Was it because she was on medication for so many years or on and off meds or it's, it's just so, um, or was it that person's I, I just destiny to have my... it be that way? Mm -hmm. What? Say it again. Or was it that person's destiny to have it be that way? Hannah, it gets challenging. That it was her destiny. I, mm. I she, my sister was just brilliant, a brilliant, brilliant mm. artist. And, and, um, and we had a very challenging relationship, but you know, I, I still, I, it makes, I just don't know in terms of, I just know for myself mm -hmm. that like my sister and I were raised in the same house and, you know, sadly she ended up committing suicide and, you know, I'm in this program. Like who, who knows we can be parented by the same people and have very different experiences. And some people I think have great parents and just fall into, you know, a, a habit or um, a group of people who influence them that is, you know, that can 
there's so many forces, I guess is what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, I really get that. Yeah, because it's like the mental dialogue of like something that I know is that there is always that like that really hard on yourself voice that's in the back of, you know, all the mental illness. But I have been around mental illness where it's like no matter what, it's like that voice wins, you know? And it's oh, just like, yes. it's just, and that's where it's like, yes, medication, you know, yes, whatever we need to do to support that. But it is, it's, it's just, wow, it's really mm -hmm. something to watch. So you're right. I don't think there is a one size fits all for that. Definitely. Perfect. So, and then the part that I was excited to get into, right. With your journey, cause you've been through so many phases right at first. Cause it was like, I've already done this stuff, like not <laughs> sure. Right. And the whole, like, you know, I know that I'm bigger than this, but then also I see this all the time where people, they may not like value themselves or see themselves as worthy of, you know, all that is possible for us, which could be holding us back eating popcorn on the sidelines. Right. So like yeah. maybe give us a little window of awareness into like what those phases looked like for you as the roller coaster was happening and you kept bumping around to still make sure that you're playing the game. Do you mean when I was in, when I started the program? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, at first I kind of was like, well, I don't know. I don't know if this is, you know, I, I definitely had that, you know, that posturing, like, uh, you know, what am I going to learn here that I don't already know, you know, uh, and that is a part of me. That is a part. Like I have that. And mm. now I, now I have a way of talking about like the various parts of that, that show up and, and have, you know, always have something to say. Um, so there was that at first. And then one night, I just, I was doing a writing, I was following one of your writing prompts and I just started writing and write. I just read it over too, before I got on this podcast, because I wanted to remind myself, like, mm. where was I? And eight pages later of just like writing, 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 what weight has always meant to me and what dieting has always meant to me and well, all of it. Mm. And I got done and I was like, okay. I think I need, I really do need to pursue this. Um, mm -hmm. And after that, I just was, I was all in and I was able to start like, I remember one time I was in a, a meeting that I was <laughs> really not happy being at. And I'm sitting there in the meeting and I'm like munching on chips and like kind of like doing other things. And, and suddenly I was like, wait a second, I don't even like these chips, but I'm half a bag through like what? And that was like, that was a major trigger for me. Like, oh, oh, I'm not hungry for chips. I don't even like these chips. I'm pissed off that I have to be here. I'm pissed wow. off, at, you know, like, and so like that kind of awareness started to, or um, there was another time when I was like mindlessly going after some food and like I got really in like I needed to have chocolate or I needed to have ice cream or something ridiculous and uh and suddenly it just I stopped and I took a breath and I realized that like it was my it was my inner child it was my like my inner four-year-old like having a tantrum and I was able to turn it around and I, it's, sometimes I talk yeah. like this and I, I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I make fun of people who talk like this. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was just going to ask, would you be willing to like demonstrate a little bit of what that, I know that you have background in like theater and stuff like that. Could you give us a little My four-year-old, she was just legit having a temper tantrum and was like demanding, like, you know, mm. um, and like, she is also a part of me, definitely a part of me. And I was like. And by then I had had, I had some of the tools that we learned and I was able to go to her as myself now and just say like, you know, what's going on for you, you know? And she was scared and she was lonely and she, cause I spent a lot of time alone as a child, a lot of time alone, which makes it really hard for me to connect with people sometimes. And, and I just sat with her and I told her that, um, you know, if she wanted to, she could come live with me. Mm. Like she could have her own space. And, and, and then like, I, it was, I was able to like create in my psyche this like 
I, I, I wrote to the group, I was like, I adopted my inner child today and she wants a dollhouse and a kitten, but she's not getting a kitten. <laughs> you know, like, I, was, <laughs> I remember that. I fully that. like embrace like what that would look like. Mm-hmm. Um, and the part that the parts work was really just really powerful. Um, yeah, and, and then, I just want to pause for one second because for anyone listening, it could be like, "What is this? What is she talking about?" Like, I know, right? I know. I no, sound like a I no, sound exactly ridiculous. Yeah. And, and I totally get that. So yeah, so for people who are listening, it's just like talking about the subconscious. It's like all of our past experiences equal the way that we view the world today. And so any of our current triggers, including food or, you know, like Felicia was saying with her work and she was pissed off at the meeting or whatever that she was at, right, that can cause us to just engage and interact with the world in a certain way. So for most of us, when we feel an uncomfortable emotion, then we numb it out with that food. So in this journey, we were really starting to uncover that stuff before we just go to our automatic habits and patterns and behaviors. The hypnosis helps to slow down the mind to kind of be able to stay in the present moment and then when we're out of alignment, it's easier for us to be like, wait a second, what, what am I, what's happening here? What's Instead of on? like not yeah. realizing the entire time all the way until later that it's happening or whatever. And so we, we give you tools to being, to be able to dialogue with these parts of yourself. And so, so often the emotion is coming from your little girl, you know, from the past that was feeling lonely or sad or whatever. So learning how to reparent yourself and give yourself that unconditional love and that compassion, right? It's scientifically proven that to, to be that way with the child, even with a pet, right? Is actually like so much more effective than the normal berating and hard on ourselves that we do. Like, why can't you, like, why are you eating chips again? Like you stupid idiot, you fat, Mm. blah, 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 blah. Like that's, you're a failure at life. Like this is the old model of how to motivate human beings to do something, But what we don't realize is that that model is what causes us to end up eating more again and again and again and again. So we're slowing down, we're becoming aware of our patterns, and then we're repatterning right through all various subconscious mind modality tools um, so that your body can feel safe again to basically be in the world. Yeah. And I can trust myself. Like Mm. I, you know, and, and the, that, you know, that inner child is not the only part. Like I have a lot of parts and, and, (laughs) Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I've had to make peace with those parts. I have had, I have parts that are like, ugh. you today, I looked at a picture of myself. I was leading some, I don't know, some Shabbat thing. And, uh, and my boyfriend took a picture of me and sent it to me. And all I could see was how fat I got. Like even, even still, like I was like, but what he wrote under it was priestess. Wow. I saw, I saw what my mother would say or what my mother would see, which was, oh, she really let herself go. Mm. She used to be so beautiful. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then she put on all this weight. It's all over. Like, it, you know, that was, that's what I operate from. But my, bre- my boyfriend saw a priestess. And I was just like, I mean, if that's not like immediate, like instant, just a turnaround, mm-hmm. I think that that's Absolutely. the biggest thing I got yeah, that, this program. That's huge. That is huge. You know, that's the thing that I see from people all the time. Fortunately, a lot of people I talk to have very supportive spouses or significant others, not always. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's usually what it is. It's like, my friends see me this way. My partner sees me this way, but I can't see myself that way. Right. And people won't be having sex with each other. They won't be, you know, like, because like, I just had a woman this morning. She was like, cause I feel disgusting. Like, and their partner is saying to them, you're beautiful. I absolutely love you no matter what way you look, but nothing changes. You can have all the validation from the outside saying it, but until we're actually doing the work to get our own selves to believe that and to say that, and it is work. And seeing yourself, body image is one of the last things that really changes for a human being subconscious. So it makes total sense that sometimes the first thought is still that, but the important part is that the awareness is there and then the tools to be able to continue. Oh, okay, cool. So I'm still engaging with mom's dialogue of, you know, I've really let myself go and blah, 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 but that's not the conversation I want to have with myself. So let's create the conversation that better serves me, that empowers me, that can support me in continuing on my path 
as a yes. whole and complete woman. Yeah. And I can say, you know, and I can have a conversation with that part of myself that's like, mom, I know that you say this because you're concerned about mm -hmm. me, but really that's not, it's not helpful. It's not helpful to me now at this point in my life. Um, so that it, boundary setting, like, I mm -hmm. love that you're even like visually and mentally setting a boundary with your old mom's voice, mm -hmm. right? That's coming yeah, and up she's as gone. yours. I mean, she's not alive anymore. So mm -hmm. I, you know, all of these conversations can, you know, they really are being generated from me and my, you know, what I wish we could have, we could have come to in, in her lifetime, mm -hmm. but yeah. So what I'm really hearing is that it's a practice. It's just yes. an ongoing practice. Yeah. And that's been the journey for me. I mean, that's how I started talking about this is that is uh, learning the tools and I'm notorious for like, you know, I mean, I'm going to keep talking about the tools, but like the tapping, like when you start to get like squirrely in your head and you start to tap and then I would just start mashing different tools together to like get to whatever was going on you know, um, I don't really, I'm not really a rule follower. Like I don't, I'm always kind of making things up as I go along and I'll take things. And I, yeah, there have been times when I, I'll find myself being really squirrely and then I'll just tap to get like, to get myself grounded. And then I'll realize that like, there's parts arguing, but then I'll realize that underneath that there's just this like sad kid, you know, like, one tool leads to the next mm -hmm. and I it, it's extraordinary it really is it's extraordinary yeah this whole process it's amazing yeah and it reminds me about how you know a lot of the tools also just bringing the awareness and then using the tools but you know emotion is energy in motion right and like sadness and anger and like especially as people who are leaders or professionals or even parents right like we build up this muscle of like staying in our head and like getting so far away from like our body and our feelings because we need to program ourselves to continue to work harder and faster and stronger right and that can also lead to the pain and suffering of constantly thinking about food and weight relationship issues just personal issues in general so you know getting a habit of how can I access my feelings and honor them, acknowledge them and actually like create that release for myself. I think I've shared before about how I had a practice for, I don't know, two weeks to a month. I can't remember. It was in Thailand. And every day in my meditation would be like, I'm going to feel into my body until I feel something sad so that I can cry like a forced cry through meditation, just because I wanted to get comfortable with that. And then learn to find like so much safety and just like, oh, okay, cool. Once you cry, you feel like way better. And like, I love a good cry. Is, right? So good. Love, people are always like, oh, I, I, I don't want to cry. And I'm always like, cry, cry. It's Absolutely. a form of prayer. P cry. Absolutely. Crying is I love amazing. to cry. <laughs> letting that emotion go 100%. And so, you know, for some people that's not the case. And anger is the one that they're like, mm -hmm. never will I show anger at all. You know, and that for me was like my biggest binge reason was because I had anger, you know, and like you were saying, like the potato chips, cause you're like pissed off. Right. It's like, oh my gosh, but behind a diet, I never was able no. to feel the anger because I was always just numbing with having those strict rules. So I would never have to feel that way, if that makes sense. So yeah, it's a, it's a setup for it, for, at least for me, it has always been a setup for failure. Always, mm -hmm. always. Yeah. And this is not, you know, to take the, the other thing that I've really gained from this is just taking the emotional charge out of the food, you know, like I wrote, um, Lisa, who's another coach sent me a thing today to remind me of like where I, where I kind of landed at the end of my time in the weight hypnosis program. And I wrote this whole like diatribe about how there was ice cream in my freezer and it had been there for days. And that like, that was, that was always unheard of for me because I, I almost would like, I couldn't rest knowing that there was ice cream in my freezer. I know that that sounds like sort of crazy, but like, I just could, I, I couldn't rest my brain mm -hmm. and that ice cream would have been gone in a heartbeat. And now, like, I don't, I just don't feel that kind. I mean, I might still binge on ice cream. I'm not saying I'm like, you know, not eating those things. It's just, 
there's sometimes when I can be eating something and then I'll be like, wait a second. I don't do this anymore. I totally <laughs> forgot. I put this in the hot air balloon in my hypnosis and it went away. Oh, that's so silly that I thought I really needed to eat this right now. And it helps. It really does. One hundred percent. No, absolutely. And it doesn't sound crazy about the ice cream at all. It's like we learn these tools for how to cope with life, you know, and it's like, you know, on times when I feel angry, right? (laughs) What'd you say? Delicious tools. Delicious tools. Oh yeah. Ice cream is an all, it's an all encompassing. I, I eat it. If I'm sad, I mean, I eat it. If I'm happy, if I'm angry, if I like, I, any excuse always. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And I love what you're saying, you know, around the, it's not that necessarily goes away. I think, you know, maybe not using the word binging if you're binging, like, I think, tell us the difference and be honest, obviously between the binging that you're describing that still happens today versus the binging that happened before you started doing very different. Yeah. Yeah. It is different. Yeah. Tell us Um, about that. Well, I think it really just comes down to being able to interrupt the behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really comes down to that because I can, I still get cravings. It's not like I, I do, I get cravings. I'm a human. This is something I've lived with for almost my whole life since childhood. That's been a pretty long time. So, um, it, yeah, it's the ability to interrupt it, to say like, oh, I know I happen to notice that I'm eating this, a, a lot of ice cream right now. Um, huh. I, what's behind this? Is this, is this something that, um, you know, is this something I really want to be doing? And sometimes the answer is yes. Yes. It's something 100%. I really want to be doing right now. Mm-hmm. Yep. And now I have really like trained myself to say, yes, I'm eating it and I'm going to enjoy it and I'm not going to judge myself about it. But there, but then sometimes I'll be like, no, this is really not what I'm needing right now. Mm-hmm. I really just need to call a friend or I really need to do some yoga like, or I need to go for a walk, whatever the, that thing is. So I think that the difference between binging, which is like just this mindless, like, numbing and then you're eating it and you're like wait where did it go like i I don't even remember eating that i don't even remember tasting that Mm -hmm. versus you know just being able to to slow it down Mm -hmm. binging to me implies this like insatiable yes hunger Mm -hmm. that even if you down a bag of chips is still there and then you and then you get to beat up on yourself because not only because you feel the you know how terrible you were feeling before you ate the chips but now you can also add that to the list of things that you can just hate yourself about oh absolutely you no know? and the and so the difference between the binging and what i'm experiencing now is that is so much more compassion for myself and and also being able to say yeah i'm i'm going to have a little bit but i don't need to eat like a carton of ice cream i can mm-hmm. i can take it or leave it that's a big deal yeah i know in our um group this morning and i just was speaking to her earlier today she was saying you know i went to have ice cream today and i remember when she started the program she was like i have to have my ice cream i have to have my she was like i just realized i haven't had ice cream in like 4 weeks or something like that She's like, and I didn't even notice it. Yes. You know, so that was the same thing as me mm, seeing that there was ice cream in my freezer and being like, oh, I forgot that it was there. Like that's yes. for people who don't understand this type of Mm -hmm. obsessive thinking, they must, they must listen to this kind of thing and be like, yeah. And like, (laughs) there's many people who have ice cream in their freezers at this very moment that we're saying it, but for some of us, um, it it takes on a life of its own. Yeah, absolutely. That whole scarcity thing and like diet mentality telling you that that food is wrong and bad makes us just hyper aware of that food. Like that needs to be there. It's like, that's my comfort blanket because all day long, you're trying to strong bow yourself away from not eating all day. Mm-hmm. And then something happens and it's like, that's the first thing you think of because that's what you've been trying to avoid, but has always been in the background all day long. Versus now it's like, oh, I can have that if I want it. 
and then that charge goes away and then yes. a trigger happens. And now it's like, it's not the first immediate thought. Yes. It's like, okay, that's one thing I can do. Or like you said, like, what do I actually need? So definitely increasing that awareness, slowing down that mind. Yep. And I totally can relate to that, you know, eating a whole bag of chips is that, and it's like, wow. And to me, that's the indicator of like, when you have a whole bag of chips and you still feel like, where's the next thing? Like, I have to have more. It's like, that is the signal that this is emotional. Like there is something that you, like, you probably need to cry. Maybe you need to yell, may, like you need support with that emotion, yeah. you know, and it's not your fault and it doesn't necessarily have to be a huge emergency. You know, there's, there are worse things that you could be binging on than chips and ice cream, even though I understand how severe binges can be and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, for people who want to get past that and get out of the diet mentality and do that kind of stuff, it's like, just need a little support in the emotional mastery piece you know, learning how to feel into those feelings, you know, get past that and, and get support in that area because yeah. So how would you describe, you know, you looked at before and after, so what's Felicia before versus Felicia now, and this is what nine weeks, something like that. 10 weeks, <laughs> I have, no, like that. I have Maybe. no, I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> no, I know. No, it's, it's not I a know lot. It's, it's not a lot. Of I know it's people, people ask me a lot and they're like, you mean I can really have food freedom in eight weeks? Like, are you really? Well, I think me that, that that's you know. I think yes, you can have food freedom. You can have food freedom in a week. Yeah, you right. Can. I mean, you can. <laughs> yeah. However, however, mm-hmm. it does not always translate to. You know, at the end of this program, I'm going to be twenty pounds lighter or ten, mm-hmm. pounds, whatever, whatever. Like that. And one of the things that attracted me to the program was that it wasn't a diet and that there was no prescribed, you know, for you to give us permission to eat whatever we want. Like that was just radical. That was radical for me. So what the difference between me before and me now, I have definitely slowed down. I have slowed down. I'm meditating more. I, I make full use of all of the, like, I use all the tools. I love the tools. Um, I'm much more apt to reach out if I'm struggling. I'm Mm -hmm. I'm saying this, even though the past few days I've been like, not in a great place, but I'm still reaching out though. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm here. I, here I am showing up and I'm so happy that I'm here. Mm -hmm. Um, and I am, I'm, I'm aware that I don't feel any shame around talking about my struggles with food. I've never talked about it like in this way before, like mm. this public to like put it out there. Wow. Is, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Yeah. And I feel more, um, I do feel like being in service to other people who are going through this is really a calling. It's mm. something that I'm feeling more and more like it it's very meaningful to me. And um so well, I know yeah, that you and I also talked about um ice cream as being and anything dairy being like mother's milk, you know? Yeah, and definitely. like food is at the source of where so much of our like nurturing and like the reason that we're, you know, came to this plant, like what we're all here for, like getting present to the miracle that is life and like who you are and like that intimacy and that care and that love and that belonging and all of that stuff, you know, that really makes this journey, you know, something that's meaningful. And I know that that's something that you really care about. Like I see you as being like mama nature, like mama zomba that's nature. one of my like, parts really yeah oh, that's Earth right. Mother goddess that. like you know sometimes right? she'll argue sometimes other parts of me will argue with her like i don't want to go outside like sound like my kid right now but like i don't want to go I mean, like mother goddess you know is like okay i know you don't want to go outside but you really need to go dig in the garden for a little bit and that's true like that's exactly what i need to do sometimes and mm-hmm. it's just it's an amazing journey it really mm-hmm. is and 
happened? It all started with me, you know, going away for a week and thinking I was going to go like write a one woman show or something. I don't know what I thought I was going to do, but like I just ended up finding this podcast and just listening to it all weekend. And then nice. at the end of the weekend, this is a perfect way to kind of sum summarize like all of this at the end of the weekend. I was starting to berate myself for not doing anything. Like I didn't do anything creative and I didn't, you know, I didn't produce something. Mm -hmm. But I, the one thing I came away with was, I don't know who Leslie Thornton is, but I'm going to work with her. I don't even, I, I don't even know how, like, but I'm, I'm going to work with her. And you know, the magic of uh, technology and being able to just like then email you and talk to you and like get into your orbit. I think that was really what I was supposed to do that weekend. And I did, I could have bypassed the like beating myself up about not writing a brilliant piece of work. Mm -hmm. um, but that yeah, was what we just say. Yeah, that's really a big deal. You know, every coach that I've hired has shown up in a mysterious way to me. Like, how did that email end up like that? I just clicked on that, like everything just keeps opening up. So I love that you were able to listen to that. And, you know, I know that isolator part of you is also there as well. And I, I think what you were pointing to just a few minutes ago was around the, you know, the, the habit and pattern of when we want to kind of go back and withdraw and all of that kind of stuff of like how good it feels to actually connect. Right. And it's like, yes. we kind of almost need to like prove to that part of ourselves of like, yeah, I know that you think it's better over here when we turn our phone off and blah, 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 blah. But like, actually, like, what if this is actually an indicator that like connection is like where it's at, right? That's and one I know of my that biggest that experience. So one of my that, biggest things, right? yeah. 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 Did you want to say more about that? Just that, um, I, yeah, the isolator part of me is very strong and um, it's been really, uh, it's kind of flourished in the pandemic because then like I had mm -hmm. full permission to just isolate. Right. Um, Absolutely. But, it is always an indication to me when I'm like, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to call right now. I'm not going to take that phone call. I'm not going to answer that email right now. That's when the red flags start, you know, kind of waving. And that's when I know that I really have to push myself out of that comfort zone. That's amazing. Yeah. And then establishing that trust again, that you're not going to go all the way back there because there's a part of you that desires to come out of that more than the part of you that used to wish to stay back, you know, all the way in that space. Yes. So yes. yeah, it's awesome. So I love that you went on that retreat, probably maybe the isolator part brought you to go to that retreat. Yeah. Go inward or whatever. Yep. And then, you know, podcast comes and now you're in a connection with me in the podcast. <laughs> right. So for the people that are you like previous you, right. And they have an isolator part or whatever, and they've been listening to this podcast and they're resonating with it, but maybe they can't take that action to book that call or to get the training so that they can book the call or whatever. Like, what would you say to that person? I would say that I would say um that diets don't work i would say that this is so much more than therapy and diets and exercising all the time and um this for me like you know i i don't like to generalize for other people like i don't like to tell people what they need to do i can only talk from my experience and say this has been transformative for me and it was it's worth just the initial call mm. it's worth the initial just the initial call even if you're the kind of person who just like wants to make the contact doesn't want to make the investment of time or whatever and wants to just listen to the podcast like you can still get something out of this this work i needed to go into it I was not going to get what I needed. Like, part of me was like, well, I don't, I could just like do Noom because I was getting, mm -hmm. you know, all these things from Noom and my friends were doing Noom and I was like, that works for them. That doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. Noom is not going to be on a call with me three times a week, two or three times a week, like making me take accountability for myself. Mm -hmm. Noom is not going to like it. I mean, maybe at some point it will. So yeah. I would say to those people like, you know, 
hold on to the old ways of being as long as you can, if that's what's working for you. But it was not working for me. And I, you know, I did the, the thing that I was feeling like I needed to do. Mm. And follow your heart. Mm. That's beautiful. Thank you for that. Absolutely. I have people that talk about Noom. And um, yeah, I think that if it resonates with you, I think exactly what you're saying. It's about following your heart. Like I know for me, you know, I just got into a certain part of my path where it's like, I need more like connection than that. I need more like yeah. intimacy than that. Like some feeling with that, right? Like just like plugging stuff into a phone. Like it was like, I, that was like, Oh. crack to me is like get that out of my space like there's not nothing that I want to do with that arena so absolutely for the people that it works for it's awesome. oh absolutely 100 you know? percent. I totally agree it's all about yeah following your heart and knowing what it is that you need to make your journey work yeah. for you so Felicia thank you so much oh it's I really been an honor and a joy to That's an honor. speak with and yeah just I know everyone out there is just loving and appreciating all of your beams of light that are <laughs> shooting out whether it's just in the you know audio version or if they are catching the video but it's always a delight to be with you and again thank you for just your service everywhere that you go in the world, like you show up and you're a bright shining star and we can all see it and feel it. And I'm just so grateful that you took that step for yourself and just thank you so much. Oh, it's merely a reflection. I feel the same way about you. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Perfect. So for anyone who's ready to just have that call, like Felicia was saying, you know, those calls really are transformational, you know, just to at least find out like what is in the way for me? Like, you can be like, oh, maybe that's me, or maybe that's me, or maybe that's me. But like, until you actually get that call, like, it's very challenging to identify what that actually is for you, or else consider the. Fact I do want to say something about this to because to the podcast, yeah. Please. When I was listening to the podcast, I just remember like looking, even just looking at the names of the like the titles of the of the episodes and being like, me, me, also me, also me. Like, even just looking at that was resonating so mm. I guess I would also say like if it resonates it probably is you like <laughs> you mm -hmm. know make the call make the call and then go mm -hmm. from there you can always say no but if you don't make the call you don't open up that possibility yeah to really find a different way I love that I remember I had a friend and she was like I think I'm gonna hire that coach like in six months and I was like, why don't you have the phone call with her now? So you at least know what that looks like. And she's like, oh, right. Yeah. So then she like booked that call now, you know, and then it's like, now she at least has the idea of what that looks like. And it's yeah. like, maybe what you find out on that, taking that next step of towards what you want is going to give you the access to whatever your next step is. Exactly. Like maybe it actually is time now, but you're telling yourself a story that it's six months from now. So yeah act now the future is happening now we live so much like it's someday one day it's like we might not even be here in six months if you know? the pandemic has taught me anything mm -hmm. it's that right like don't put it off don't put off your joy right don't put Absolutely. off your joy so I was saying I was like to someone today I was just like like imagine that like the difference that your summer could be if you weren't always thinking about food you know like what if you're afraid to wear a baby enjoying food. your family you know <laughs> Yeah, right. like I, I, I can't tell you how many parties and, and gatherings and things that I've gone to where I just could I couldn't even like get my bring myself to just like, you know, wear a bathing suit or wear shorts or mm -hmm. just. And how much mental real mm -hmm. estate it takes for like for weeks before a party, you're like, oh, my God, like I need to starve myself to get into mm -hmm. my bathing suit. And then you're like worried about it. And like, it's just all a cover up for like the stuff that we work on here, you know, yeah. the insecurities and the not thinking that you're beautiful or good enough now, like all of that, you know, so give yourself a gift of a call. Felicia, thank you again. Love you so much. Yeah, we'll you too. Really soon. Really appreciate well. you. Thank you. All Bye. right. Bye.